Hello everyone, uh, and welcome again, if you've seen it before, and welcome for the first time if you haven't seen it before. Uh, today I'm going to tie a fly that's uh, that the colors are originating from the beautiful Jock Scott classic fly, which I have here on my wall. And this one is tied by Carl Ebning. He ties me one of these uh, every year. So it has been two years. But I talked to him on the phone yesterday and he's gonna start my third one. And here's uh, one of my absolute favorite classic flies and it's a green Highlander. I love how it looks. So, I wonder what he will tie for me this time. I'm looking forward to it because I love to hang, ha have those classics on my wall, but I have not tried to tie them myself because I don't think that I have the skills to do that, but it doesn't matter because I get them from the skilled tires. And uh, I will try to tie Michael Fredin's uh, Scott, that's yellow and black, and the, on the Jock Scott, the yellow back body and black front body, but on this one it will be a green front body. So let's just start to tie it and uh, hope for the best. Here I have uh, a yellow, uh, fluorescent yellow medium fits tubing and uh, the extra small is the black uh, fits tubing extra small and medium medium and extra small is the ones that fit together and medium and large no small and large fit together also if you want to tie a bigger fly or something but on these ones they are the easiest to put on uh, Fredin flies uh, different kinds of cones and TTTs and BTTs and everything. So let's tie it with that one. Tie it uh, with the 12-0 thread from Fredin flies also and the new bobbin holder which I really like. It's short so I can use my fingers to fix the thread if I lay it like this and I want it to lay there I can do it with my finger and I also love the Viking look on his tools and they feel a little Vikingy in the, the what do you call it eh, whatever you see for yourself English my English as always and here I have put in the black extra small into here so you have to put it quite far in so you don't get any problems later on and then you cut this medium in an angle and then you just tie pretty hard to get them to hold on to each other so you don't need any glue like this and I stop here because I will start with some uh, mirage tinsel in the back if I can get it out super messy as always on my table when I am in the mood for tying flies I don't clean my room until the mood of tying flies is going down then I clean it so most of the time I tell my wife that I'm going out to clean my fly tying room and uh, when I'm done cleaning I haven't cleaned anything at all I'd, I've just tied 10 flies <laughs> but this room is in my garage so there's no problem. I, when we lived at the apartment before we moved to this house, I had my fly tying room in the 
in the house and she did not like the feathers that was everywhere in the sofa in the bedroom and, and I start with the ribbing which is Alta Gold SSS braid and the back body is sealized silver SSS braid and I tie it in on my side and then I just wind it forward cover up we tied in the mirage tinsel so we don't get any tying thread seen ev anywhere and we're done with this fly and as always I go a little too far up and lock it in fold it over and then cut it off then I go back to where I'm going to start the dubbing which is about here and here I have a Greenland Green SSS dubbing and there is glitz dubbing and the regular dubbing which I have mixed so start to dub that on the amount that you want I tie on pretty much dubbing on my flies because I brush it out pretty hard so I wanted to get a little translucent and it also gives a very glittery flashy body which I like and I try to make it uh, grow in the front so it's smaller here and gets bigger and bigger and bigger to help create the drop form that you want on your salmon tube flies so the last turns is tied in the front here and then pull it back and you just tie a few turns in front here like that and then I pull the strands forward so I don't lock them down with a ribbing and now I take my uh, Alta Gold braid and I spin it and then I start to wind it on as a ribbing Michael has a body hackle on this fly, fly as well but I rarely use body hackles so I will tie a ring neck pheasant hackle in front here to be the fibers that vibrates along the body of the fly and here I twist it back and I fold the ribbing back so I can lock it in even better like this and just cut off that and then we take our dubbing brush and we dub out this beautiful Greenland green dubbing good and so we check that no dubbing is too long down here to tangle in the hook and we don't have that and now I will take a, a ring neck pheasant feather in front here instead of a body hackle and make a few turns in front of the dubbing tie it in on my side like this 
and then I wind it on as tight as I can to the dubbing, all the turns. So the first turn as close as you can to hold back the fibers so they get on the on one side of the stem. And then you just wind the turns as close as you can to the to the dubbing. And it doesn't matter if you put the stem on top of the stem on the first the turns you make before because we will have a wing and a hackle here then you just tie it in I see now that I have uh, oops god damn it the thread went off and now I take my dubbing uh, no hackle plier and I grab a hold of the little line that broke so I don't ruin the fly and then I pull it out so the line gets the thread gets straight and then we put it in the hole again and then just suck it out and start to wind it on again on top where you tied in the, the hackle and where the thread broke so we don't ruin the fly we can still tie this one I think now I cut off the, the thread and I pull a little bit in the hackle stem which, which was no problem and I don't know where the there's the thread that broke cut that away also and hold the fibers back and we can take away that one and there we are no problems the fly is looking exactly like it did when I broke the thread but uh, the problem is if there's any problem with the dubbing needle, there it is, is that uh, this gets a little bit bigger when you use more thread and you want this to be small. And as you can see now the medium tubing goes to here. I want it a little bit longer. So I have to tie a little bit of this fly on the extra small tubing. But uh, that doesn't matter for me. If the fly breaks, I have a lot more where that came from. And underneath the first wing, we take uh, Hot Magma Yellow um, Angel Hair HD, which is a thicker one from Fredin Flies, and then just tie that on wide here. And one turn and fold it over. and two turns and then after you can pull the strands to the sides if you're not happy with the width so the if you don't succeed to tie them in wide you can pull them to the sides and these strands should be shorter than the hook so you cut them off in different length and you don't want them to hook will be about here so this is fine like that and now we take the first wing which is sunburst yellow and take away a few of the stiffer longer strands and then I pull in the middle to get it uh, tapered and that looks pretty good. I just pinch it between my thumb and the index finger. Like this. 
I see that I need to taper it a little bit more. There we go. Tie the first wing in. Then I press with my thumb on top here. So it gets a little wider. And then loose turn and pull down. One, two, three, four, five hard turns. So we lock the wing in thoroughly. And this looks pretty good in my opinion. And then we cut off the excess. I cut it a bit away from the from there because when I have this little hair left, it's easier for me to clean it up. like this and now we will use some Greenland green angel hair and this is the thinner version as angel hair SSS angel hair and I will take just a few strands and I put them wide between my fingers like this and then I put this one on the on my side and make one turn and I fold the other half over on the other side so it gets a good spread one two and I have a look I can move this around a little bit also if I want to, but that landed good. And now I will cut them off in different lengths here too. And I always cut them off a little bit longer than the yellow hair because I want these strands to be seen under the, the black wing, which I will tie on. Now, but first some glue on the hair here and then I will use a yellow hackle. to get this fly rather bulky because I'm gonna fish this quite early and most of the time there's quite a lot, a lot of water and pretty cold like that now we have put on a little bit of glue which will hold the yellow wing really well and now I will tie on a yellow soft tackle. Cut a little triangle and tie it in on my side. Like that, and here was a little angel hair that I don't know where it came from, but whatever. And now to the hackle plier, just feel so the glue is dry because otherwise, you can ruin the hackle that you tie on, and we definitely don't want to do that. So, just hold back the strands first turn as close to the wing as possible as always and then we work our way a little bit forward so the second turn goes a little bit forward and the fluffy part here I want it to be down in front of this ugliness that is underneath the hackle, like this, and we just lock that in. One, two, three, four, five. It's easier if you take away the hackle ply first, but. I just <clears throat> do it like this. I don't know why I have to 
worked my way away from that kind of tying. And here is my little comb, which I check so the it has an even spread. And I look, and the black hackle is sitting well underneath. Sometimes you tie it in, the black hackle that you tied in before, if you touch it with a thread and it ends up in all various places, but this one worked out fine. And here we have a black soft wing, which I will take away some of the fluff in the bottom, which is not much on this beautiful hair. And then we take away if there's any shorter strands. And then we hold it between our thumb and our index finger and we look and then we pull in the middle many strands from the start new grip fewer strands new grip fewer strands that should give us a pretty good tapering of this and then pinch it between your thumb and index finger put it on top check out the length if you think it's too long, you can pull away a few strands. And then we do a loose turn and pull it down. One, two, three, four, five hard turns. And then we pull this up a little bit. We pack the thread and it gets a little bit tighter. And I think, see now that this uh, wing landed too much on that side. That I don't have a thumbnail like the other ones to press it down like this so I just take it with my fingers like this and then I pull the hair towards me and all of a sudden I am pretty happy with how the wing sits so that's the way of doing it and then I pull this again and I cut away a, w a bit away from the where I tied it in because now it's easier for me to get more of the hair get closer to the to the wing I tied in and there we go and now I will tie in a few strands of nasty rusty on top also the thinner angel hair and I hold it wide between my fingers again and this wing is pretty long so I will put it on like this and one turn pull down fold it over and use your finger to spread it a little bit like this and then one two turns and I think it landed quite good I will use my little comb and comb it through yeah it looks looks quite good good enough for me and here is one more strand that I don't know where it came from. And now I will take uh, Peacock dyed yellow. And I will take uh, five strands because this is a quite big fly. I don't know if these are long enough, but I will try. And then I will put them apart a little bit between my fingers here before I tie them in and like this and then I will put them on top and I have to push them in a little bit and do a loose turn and then I pull down one two three 
and they landed really good. This is the second time in a row that I can tie all of them in at the same time, so I don't know how I do it, but they landed great. And all the ones are following the wing. Sometimes my one is going this way and that way, and I have to tie them in one by one. But this is the second time in a row that I don't have to do that. So I hope that it continues. My luck continues with the with the peacock. <laughs> and now I will take two jungle cocks. See if I can find two beautiful ones. There's one beautiful one. And let's see if I can find one that's the same size. It's not split, but this one's too big. I'll change the. <sighs> Here, maybe. These two will do. And they are going to be almost as long as the body. So like this. I put them next to each other, the same length. And then I pull like this. And then I check the length, this will be good. And then I pull away the fibers on the stem here. And then when I tie them in, I use a little bit of the, the strands to tie in. When I do that, they seem to end up in a better position. First I pull them a little over my fingernail to, so they bend a little bit and then I put them next to the wing and then I use a few strands on the stem to tie them in and I tie them in loose, so three loose turns and the first one landed really good and I curve this too over my fingernail and then we want this to sit exactly as the first one, but on the opposite side. And that is the same length. And we will try with three loose turns now. One, two, three. And then I check from the front. Yeah, that looks really good. So I cut them off carefully. Because if I happen to pull a little bit in this one, it will jump up or down. So you have to do this carefully. Like that. And now I will take some glue on here to lock in the black wing and the jungle cock and the peacock. Like this. Now they should be secured good. And now I will end this fly with a black soft hackle. It looks like this. And I there's that's not so tight with strands, these, so I have one more. If I'm not happy with the amount. I just tie a few turns with one more of the of the hackles. I think this one will be enough. And the hackle plier and feel so the glue has dried, which it has, which it have. And this one I pull a little bit down and put it in my hand so I can hold it out of the way. And then Pull the strands back, first turn, as close to the uh, 
wings, the wing and peacock as possible. I put it in my hand again, so I have a little room. Pull back the strands, and that happens because the stems sometimes are really fragile. But as long as you hold on to the hackle, it doesn't matter if it breaks. You just connect the plier again and keep on winding it on. And, <sighs> fuck. Sorry. Beep! There's no kids watching my fly tying movies anyways. Fly tying films. It's not, it's not a movie. Let's start over. I, when the hackles are this soft, I use a little moisture. So they stay better on the one side where I want them to stay. And we lock it in. One, two, three, four, five turns. Cut away the stem. And use my little comb again to see that the black hackle has a nice spread. I think it looks quite good. And run the comb through the wing like this. And now we will take a, uh, let's see, cone head, gold fits tungsten. So we take, I don't, yes. Here's the tungsten, hello. What? Yes, see you soon. My wife is going shopping. Again, <laughs> and here I put it on a little bit first. This is a tungsten turbo tube. No, tungsten turbo cone head, and this one will is about the weight of the hook. So first of all, it when the water hits this, it will press the water out from the fly, and then the water will get back. Here, so it makes the fly swim better and it also it balances the fly because the weight is almost the weight of a of a hook so it swims um, uh, good it had it has a good keel when it when it swims which I think is pretty important but uh, the ones that tie without uh, cone heads they often put in some weight underneath the dubbing to get the same balance but I really like to tie with the uh, uh, 13 flies tungsten turbo cone heads and now I take some glue on the thread to make a glued little thread head and now I try to make all the turns on top of each other don't want to wind it forward and you don't want to wind it to the back because this one is going to help to hold the cone head in place and it also will protect uh, the line the the tying thread behind the cone head and 
Then I put on a little bit more just to secure the cone head better. And then I take my Niklas Bauer pipe tube, which I have switched from the white one to the orange one, because this one I can find wherever it is on my messy table. And then I just push it in. Pretty hard and I grab a hold of the fly and hold against like this. And then we cut off the thread. And then we take the fly out of the vise, and then I blow in the back to see if the spread is good. And it looks pretty good, I think. And a few of the yellow strands here, the UV strands, no, fluorescent strands, are not sitting wide enough. And I can take this one and I pull it like this. Now it's going to be on this side, and this one, I can pull it a little bit to the left also. And now they sit a lot better. Yeah, it looks quite good. I could have done a little better with a hackle in the front. So the if, if you can see the cone head here. I want I want the cone head to touch the the hackle, but I have a one millimeter too short. But the fly will fish good and the fly will be durable. But when you're a fly tire like me, you want it to touch the. But um, I tied another one, and that one became. Uh, it's a lot better in the front here. As you can see, the cone had touches the hackle around this one. <sighs> but the fish will absolutely not mind. It's just small stuff uh, that you want to be looking good when you, you're a, a tube fly tire but I think it turned out quite nice and I will definitely fish this one if someone of you I thought that I would start to give the flies away that I tie here and uh, if you want this fly that I just tied the Scott Michael Fredin uh, Scott fly. You you can leave a comment in the comment section here down below, and uh, I will choose one of you to get this fly in the mail if you want to. Just leave a comment, and uh, and this fly too. This is a little slimmer tied, but. I think this one looks quite good also so if you want one of these flies just leave a comment and I will give away both of them so uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching and if you want to subscribe to my youtube channel just click the picture of me here and subscribe that would make me very happy and click the little bell to get a notification and uh, also, if you want to see another film on me that I've tied, so just click this and uh, you can see one of my other flies that I've tied here on YouTube. So, thank you very much for watching 